In the world of big dreams and massive projects, there's a category of mega projects that have caught everyone's eye. But it's not because they've achieved something amazing or mind-blowing. Instead, they've grabbed attention because they're really audacious and seem to have no real point. These are the projects that don't seem practical. They make us scratch our heads, and we're left wondering why they were even made. So with that being said, join us as we look into the most useless mega projects in the world. Let's start with a super beautiful highway in Hawaii called the Interstate 83. It's about 26 kilometers long and goes through some of the most stunning scenery you'll ever see. People were even worried that drivers would stop to enjoy the view and cause traffic jams. But here's the twist. This highway has a controversy attached to it. Back in 1960, they thought about making it to help the military, connecting a naval base and an air station. But when they said they were going to build it, a lot of people didn't like the idea. People who cared about the environment and native Hawaiians were worried about it making things too crowded. Because of the rules at the time and some changes in the plan, it took a long time for the construction to start. About 26 years later, they got permission to build it, even though it was against some environmental rules. The highway finally opened in 1997, which is almost 37 years after they first talked about it. The H3 is kind of a marvel of engineering because it was built in a tough area, and they used advanced methods to build it. Besides the cool tunnels, it mostly goes on bridges to keep the ground below safe. But even though it looks amazing, and they spend a lot of money on it, not everyone likes it. Some people call it the road to nowhere, because the reasons they wanted it in the 1960s don't make sense now, and it doesn't go straight to downtown Honolulu. And then there's the thing with the native Hawaiians. A lot of them still don't want to use the H3 today. They think it's bad luck, because they had to destroy important cultural places to build it. The H3 is a big deal in terms of big projects, but for some native groups, it's still thought of as useless. Ciudad Real Central Airport, Spain. Spain is a popular travel spot in Europe, and that influenced the idea of creating Ciudad Real Central Airport. The goal was to provide a new option for travelers within Spain and internationally, easing the burden on the crowded Madrid airport. The new airport had one of Europe's longest runways, capable of serving 2 million passengers a year. Though smaller than Madrid's 70 million capacity, it was planned to grow to 10 million with expansions. When it started in 2009, the $1.3 billion cost seemed reasonable. However, the project faced bankruptcy in 2012 due to its distant location. Despite being called a central airport, it was 200 kilometers away from Madrid, deterring passengers and airlines. In its first year, only a small airline used the airport leading to a $350 million debt by 2012. After several failed auctions, the airport found new owners in 2019. The pandemic turned it into a storage place for grounded planes, making use of its runway in space. Although this storage is temporary, however, its return to normal flight operations is also uncertain. Overall, this costly mega-project lacks practicality for travelers, remaining relatively useless. Napigal, Myanmar now let's look at another, but this isn't an airport, it's Myanmar's new capital, a city that was completely built from scratch. Back in 2002, Myanmar's military leaders secretly started creating this new capital. Unlike moving a capital, which some countries have done before, they built a whole new city. It wasn't until 2005 that they announced the name, Naypyidaw, which means, the king's residence. The reason for this sudden change wasn't very clear. Some thought it might be because of worries about possible sea attacks or even advice from astrologers. But a big part of it had to do with the old capital, Yangon. It had around 7 million people and was getting too crowded. The plan was to make a new central capital to handle the growing population. The new city was constructed pretty quickly, with the government spending $4 billion on it. Napigal has a lot of cool things, like a 20-lane highway, over 100 fancy hotels, golf courses, museums, and even a big 99-meter copy of a famous building from Yangon. But here's the thing. Not many people live there. Right now, Napigal has less than a million residents, mostly in suburbs that were there before it became the capital. People aren't too keen on staying there permanently because there aren't enough good hospitals, schools, or jobs. So it often looks like a deserted place, earning it the nickname Ghost Town. The big 20-lane highway is almost empty. There's barely any traffic. Even the airport, which can handle millions of passengers, isn't busy. 
Shopping malls only get visits from diplomats on weekends, and hotel lobbies are usually empty. Despite all this, there's some hope for Naypyidaw's future. It was designed to be a city of tomorrow, and as the population grows, it might find its purpose. But for now, it's a pretty unusual capital that doesn't do much for a lot of people. Forest City, Malaysia Forest City's location is a big draw for investors who see its advantage of being close to Singapore, a busy global hub. The city is linked to Singapore by a bridge, which makes the travel time just 20 minutes. They've even set up a place for going through customs to make moving between the two places easy. The city's plan includes things that are good for the environment, like roofs covered in plants and gardens that go up walls. The roads will be organized in layers, with the lower part for vehicles and the upper part for parks and such. They want to use only energy that comes from renewable sources and hopes to finish everything by 2035, spending around $100 billion. One of the islands is almost done, with apartments, golf courses, pools, and beaches. But this plant has faced problems. There have been issues related to money and politics. At first, lots of Chinese investors got involved, which made some people worried. By 2019, 80% of the people who owned property that were Chinese. This made some people criticize the project, saying it was like a new form of colonization. Leadership changes led to a rule that said foreigners couldn't own property there, which caused some investors to leave. Then, the pandemic and travel restrictions made things even harder. By early 2020, fewer than 500 people were living there, even though it was supposed to hold up to 700,000. Reports say very few homes were sold after the pandemic started. The main company in charge even had to let go of 1,000 workers because things weren't looking good. Because of Forest City's big plans, futuristic ideas, and complicated politics, it's now seen as a mega-project that's not working like it was supposed to. Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository Nuclear waste is often overlooked compared to other environmental issues, but its mishandling could have severe consequences. Nuclear waste is usually stored above ground near where it's created, usually near power plants. However, scientists believe that a safer solution is to bury it deep underground. In the 1980s, the U.S. tried to find a way to deal with nuclear waste. They chose Yucca Mountain in Nevada in 1987. It's close to a nuclear testing site and far from cities. The plan was to put the waste in tunnels about 300 meters under the mountain. Yucca Mountain is made of volcanic ash from millions of years ago, which can absorb radioactive waste without breaking apart. But many people in Nevada didn't like the idea. Even though the U.S. has over 100 nuclear reactor sites, none are in Nevada. People there didn't want to be the only place with nuclear waste. They also worried it could pollute a nearby water source important to Native Americans. Despite the opposition, the project got approval in 2002, and construction started again. But the resistance in Nevada grew stronger. They thought moving nuclear waste through their state could harm people and tourism. They felt Nevada was chosen because it's less populated and has fewer representatives in Congress. By the time Barack Obama became president, the project was very political. In 2010, his administration stopped funding for it. Later, a court said it should continue, but not much progress has been made. The current administration under Biden has said Yucca Mountain won't be used for this anymore. Nevada seems to have won after a 40-year struggle. Despite lots of planning and spending over $17 billion, the Yucca Mountain project has never been used and remains an inactive and useless mega project. All right, guys, there you have it. Now, have you ever stumbled upon any other grand project that ended up going nowhere? Tell us about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay connected for more engaging content. Your feedback keeps us going. Thanks for watching.